All right, JoeyRitter.com on Twitter at Joey Ritter. Look who I got today. I got Trevor Leonard uh, of the Triangle Shirt Factory and End of America. It's been a long time, Trevor. Good talking to you again. Good to see you, Joey. It was awesome. Now, I just you know looked at a recent newsletter that you put out. You're in three different bands. You play a ton of music, yeah. all different styles. Um, but let's talk End of America. Um, I just listened to you know your latest tracks you have up there, and the song "These Things Are Mine." That mm -hmm. song, I don't know if you're aware, but that song is incredible. I mean, it it nice. made the the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. That's awesome. And I will be tweeting the shit out of it. You know, Very cool. when, thank you. When this interview hits hits the internet, but um, you know. Based, you know, based on the bands that I used to play, um, you know, with uh, PCO and all that, um, you know, you've kind of come from a punk rock background, and this is way different. I mean, this is totally bluegrass, roots. Uh, how did that all come about? Well, it's kind of interesting, um, because the, the three of us, uh, we, we were all sort of in, you know, punk bands or kind of hardcore bands, and we all started doing the solo acoustic kind of stuff <clears throat> and um uh and then we start, we were touring together just solo acoustic and that's kind of what prompted the band you know so we we all come from those kind of like hardcore like punk roots and um and we also were really into like the singer songwriter acoustic side too so we sort of like merged them and you know really took a lesson from like you know the classic americana mm -hmm. rock bands you know tom petty and uh you know ryan adams bruce springsteen that kind of stuff and sort of melding all that together you know it's it's crazy that i mean you know punk maybe has some good singers but when i think of hardcore i, I generally you know vocals aren't the first thing that comes to mind yeah. but when you listen to end of america i mean the way you, I mean, I don't know if this is a good analogy, but kind of like Crosby, Stills, and Nash type harmonies. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's just great stuff, and it, you know, it's just fresh, it's new, and you know, it's just I I didn't know what to expect when I started listening to it, you know, based on you, you know your old bands and stuff, and it's just great. And oh, I know I know the other guys are uh, live in New York and stuff. Is that kind of tough managing schedules and getting together? Definitely, it's it's difficult, and it's funny because uh, I'm I'm in Philadelphia now, and they're both in New York, and it's it seems harder now than when we first started the band. Uh, one guy was living in Connecticut, I was living in D.C., and the other guy was living in New Mexico. Oh boy! And, you know, we we would just make these elaborate pl plans that we're just like buying tickets, a plane ticket or whatever, and uh, but yeah, it's tough, you know, just with. With uh, odd jobs or other pro other bands and stuff, things things get in the way or just you know it's not like the old days of when, when you you know the PCO guys lived around the corner from me you know we right. would go walk around the corner and play in the dude's garage you know um, so it's difficult you know but we 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 really just we're we're good at once we you know decide to do something we're gonna do it it's just about like pulling the trigger a lot of the times you know and saying okay, we're meeting up this time, you know. Um, do, you, do you think, um, you know, 2002 kind of time period, are you guys kind of sending each other files and, you know, ideas and you kind of are doing some songwriting over email or is it only when you guys get together? No, it's 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 a mixture for sure, you know. Um, we're, we're, we're definitely, you know, sending each other ideas and stuff like that. But um, when we get together, I mean, it's just nonstop super, you know, prolific feeling, you know, just like very easily things just arise and we start building and then, and then we'll kind of, you know, send things around from there and, you know, kind of develop it, uh, a little bit as we go. But there's not as much, uh, internet songwriting in this band as I think we all thought that mm -hmm. there would be, you know, like we thought we would have Skype practice or something. Right. And that doesn't that, work by the way. It doesn't. <laughs> there, you know, we're we're talking pretty pretty well here, but I've tried to have a guitar and a singer on the other end, and there's just a hair of a delay. Yeah, <laughs> and there's actually some programs I forget what it's called. I, oh, it's called e jamming. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know. It's, there's got to be something, but I mean, you'd think. But I downloaded this e jamming thing, and the whole video demo is the guy from Def Leppard jamming with guys <laughs> in like China and stuff. 
and you're like, yes, this is going to be awesome. And you, you download it, you know, you load it up, and it's the same thing as practicing over <laughs> Skype. Oh, like, man. And I think there's things you can do to play around with the timing issues, but I, I don't know. I, I still have yet to master, you know, playing online with somebody. That's funny. That's still in the future, I guess. We're not, <laughs> not that far into the future yet. So when I hear, you know, a punk rock song or a rock, any type of rock song, I can kind of guess at the birth of how, you know, the song was created. But when I listen to End of America, no idea. I mean, I don't know how, how that type of music gets created at all. I don't know, is it, is it more just kind of like a vocal melody that you put stuff to? or the, You know, kind of describe to me how you write bluegrass music. Um, all right, well... I mean, the song you're talking about, These Things Are Mine, um, we really actually started with the ending of that song. Uh, we had this, you know, kind of chord progression, and we started singing the melody, and usually we'll do that, and everybody will just kind of find their harmony. Mm -hmm. We'll start finding the harmony, start finding the melodies, and then, you know, try and sing a line or something. So it, it kind of started with that ending, and we had it, and we're like, okay, this is cool. We need to find, you know, the rest of the song, in essence, and, you know, that can always be a waiting game. Um, and then, uh, I don't even, I can't really recall how the other part came into it, but um, I, I remember it being sort of an elaborate procedure, figuring out, like, little, you know, stops and, and builds and stuff that don't really sound like, you know, we're thinking too much about it, which we're not anymore, but... Mm -hmm kind of remember that one in particular being, you know, a struggle. And then the lyrics, we, you know, we go through a lot of different ways. Um, it seems best, it's easiest when somebody has lyrics and, or, you know, we let somebody, one person run with it. Right. Um, this one, we were kind of all throwing in ideas and, uh, you know, really going for sort of that kind of general, I don't know, um, airy, you know, kind of elusive thing that, you know, there, there's not really a thing you can kind of sure. pin saying like, oh, this song's about a book or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like ethereal, you know, um, and so, uh, I don't know, we just kind of, we sat down and like started getting the structure and got a whiteboard out and we're like, okay, here's A, B, whatever, you know, um, figured out some more tricks and it, it started coming together, so, um, yeah, it's... It's it's a strange process. I, it's really just when the three of us to get in the room and it all it all starts happening. You know, it's something that just years of touring together and knowing each other's styles and, and singing and playing together. We just it, it comes fairly naturally, which is cool. Um, but writing, you know, is surely no no simple task. Every once in a while, you have that song that just oh that that was easy, you know. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I was the lit. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. I Oh, that's, I, most of the time it seems like hard work, you know? And yes. That was really what I was going to say. <laughs> um, no, I was, I was the, always the lyric guy. I just, I cannot think of songs, melodies. I just am not a songwriter. I, you know, I can do lyrics, but I was like the marketing, the show booking, the business guy. I could chime in with lyrics. And I yep. just, you know, it, it would just be a treat watching the musicians that I played with write songs. So, I mean, I know how songwriting is done i know all harmonies yeah. are created but you know, i mean you you did it all man i mean <laughs> i'm sure you still do you know like I, I think writing the lyrics is is one of the hardest parts you know um it's it can just really be a challenge and sometimes you just gotta you just gotta put something down and keep working it out but get something you know um just to sort of like move along and see where the song wants to go right um yeah. So I'm kind of going down memory memory lane here, but, you know, Procession came opposite. It was always such a treat to play with you guys because, you know, when I would watch you guys, like, yes, you were unified as a band for sure. I mean, your songs were tight. You guys played tight. But I just remember watching, you know, I'd watch you for a little while, then I'd watch your bass player, then I'd watch your drummer because you, even though you guys were a cohesive unit, you guys were all doing just these things individually that would just be so cool to just focus on you know that's how i would watch you guys nice and you know this is it's a really hacky question but you're such an intelligent songwriter what are your influences you know what kind of stuff really got you into songwriting oh well thanks joey appreciate that um yeah i guess uh 
when I think like way back, you know, it was sort of folk music um, from my parents, uh, James Taylor kind of stuff. But then, you know, I really got into Pearl Jam, loved Pearl Jam, mm -hmm. um, you know, Pearl Jam 10, like, and, uh, and then it kind of seemed like Pearl Jam, No Effects, um, and, uh, and Sublime all sort of hit me at the same time when I was just starting to play guitar, and they were all like, holy crap, what are they doing? Right. I, I need to figure out what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, and so that's kind of what I did, you know, I would sit down and figure out the solo to like Rico, you know, and, right. uh, and, and like the, the guitar chicks like on Sublime songs, you know. And this is before, you know, you get tabs on the internet and things like, you know, you right. actually had to exactly. listen to the CD and figure it out. Yeah, I, I remember like maybe like a year later, or a couple of years later, I, they had the tab books you could get at like the store, right. you know, and I got like the Pearl Jam tabs and the uh you know all these like shredding solos and stuff and um i didn't spend too much time with you know the tab stuff but um i just loved like listening to it and trying to figure out that groove and the like the flow of how they were playing you know it was, it was really inspiring and then you know pennywise like was a huge influence like pennywise no effects that whole southern california you know uh 90s lag wagon you know all that, all that all, melodic punk stuff, you know, just had a huge influence on me, um, which is how, you know, we, we came to meet, you know, on, under those kind of circumstances of bands, so. At Lagwagon, it's funny you bring them up, because they're, they're coming to Philly soon, and yeah. um, I think I'm going to go. Nice. And it's funny, because I'm telling people, you know, I guess younger people younger than me and nobody like lag wagon's just not a name that sticks with Dude, people you see this <laughs> nice i love it that's exactly that i, I swear, think I for brother, swear he's on my child that i did not read your shirt before i said that <laughs> i mean i'll just see with the top hat that's wow i can't believe that just happened but <laughs> yeah that's exactly that's right television <laughs> like for as brilliant as a band as lag wagon is and i really got into lag wagon I think, like, after, you know, like, the late 2000s. Yeah. I definitely listened to them in the 90s in the time period they were out. But as far as celebrating their whole catalog and, you know, listening to all the deep cuts and stuff, yeah. they definitely were a band I got into later. Right. And, uh, you know, and, you know, so I'm excited to check that show out. Now, um, going back to your band, yeah, I think you guys coined the term space punk. Oh yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> what it was. There's no better way to describe what your music was than space punk. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I guess I, I don't know. It was it was an it seemed like a cool term, you know, and and it, it seemed like at least that's what we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to be a melodic punk band, but we were, you know, super into just kind of trippy music at mm -hmm. the same same time. You know. Um, I don't know, like Pink Floyd, you know, early Incubus kind of stuff, just like weird, weird things. So sort of like merging those two was was the goal, at least. You know, right, you got. I'm sure you get this uh, a lot, but what you got to tell me what the band name meant because I I can't figure it out to save my life. <laughs> Procession came opposite. No idea. It's way above my head. Well, you know, we we struggled with band name band names. Oh, it's it's so tough. Yeah. I, I I hate it, you know. And um, we were like borderline for a little while, and it was just like it was a mediocre borderline name. And uh, so we we kind of you know we go through like making lists of ideas, and then we sort of did the uh, you know let's let's just find a a classic piece of literature and open it up, try and pick through. So that's what we did, and actually. Procession came opposite is um, a line in Alice in Wonderland. In oh, okay. The novel, yeah. So, and it was it's something like, you know, the procession came opposite to Alice, and it's just like, you know, you think about that world and how twisted and weird, like she's with the Queen of Hearts or whatever, you know, and it's some some part like that. We're just like, that's really strange, you know. Obviously, no one's gonna have a clunky ass name like that, right? Uh, well, who, who is actually reading the novel, though? I mean, we were literally we were sitting at um, 
Gregory, our, our drummer's house, you know, and he had this, like his family had this, whatever, this collection of these classic books, and we just picked one up, and we're like, oh, Alice in Wonderland, that's cool, and I don't know if, we didn't, no one was reading it, really, that's, right, that's right. sort of, we just kind of opened it up and started looking around, it's sort of like those bands that open a dictionary, and oh, there's our band name, you know, but um, yeah, we read the line, and we just thought that was kind of like, you know, sort of weird and, and cool and kind of dark, you know? See, that's a good answer. I I was hoping you weren't going to say, you know, we just put three words together that were just out of it. And, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's good to have, like, something else to blame on a band name than be like, oh, I <laughs> thought that up, you know? <laughs> yes, definitely, you know? Um, so you're from Philadelphia, born and raised, right? Yep. Um when people, uh, when bands are coming through town, are there bands, you know, besides bands that you're friends with, that you're always going to see every time they come to Philly? Um, I think so. Uh, I think about that from, it's sort of like the question, like, who's my favorite band? Mm -hmm. I feel like that gets, it's a harder question to answer now than, like, when I was 18, you know? I don't, I'm not quite sure why, if that's me or the climate or maybe a little bit of both but i mean like you're saying lag wagon i would i'll probably always go see them you know what i mean yep. um, if they're in town uh i'm trying to think who else um i kind of find you know sometimes i just like as much as i want to see bands i'm also like you know it's like when you work in a bar the last place you want to be on the weekend is at a bar, <laughs> you know yeah, it's kind of like that a little bit sometimes, but um, I've I've seen some cool shows lately. Uh, I saw Strung Out recently, and that was awesome. They did their like two two albums. Um, I saw Circus Survive was cool. Um, you know, uh, I'll definitely go see Lagwagon and. Um, all right, well, those are acceptable answers. Yeah, I guess. It's not a very good answer. I, yeah, it's just, I mean, you gave me three answers. I only asked for one. But that's that's exactly, you know, the point of the whole question is you play so much live music, I yeah. totally know what you mean by the last place, you, the last thing you want to do on the weekend is right. check out another show. You know, you want to do something completely different. But, yeah. you know, so, so yeah. Um, what was the first CD you ever bought? First CD, um, I think it was, I think the first CD that I, I got Pennywise, Pennywise on CD, actually. Okay. I think that was the very first one. Um, so what, what, year, what year are we it, talking? This was, what year was that? Maybe like 97 or something, 98. But I, you know what, even I had that CD and I was... I'm I'm like this. I'm pretty slow with most things, but you know the uh, the changeover from tape. To CD, <laughs> I was I was like pretty slow with that. I kept buying tapes, you know, kept going to the wall and buying yeah, like yep. tapes to the wall. <laughs> I was gonna say '97 is very late to switch over to CDs. Yeah, is it? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I'm not you know I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I think it was you know Pearl Jam and Nirvana in the 1992 era is when I I didn't have a CD player. I had a boombox that had like a slot for the oh, okay. CDs. Okay, right. But yeah, 92 is when I started. Um, See, I always I all those albums I got on tape. I don't know what it what maybe I was just like ah I already have all the tape stuff. You know <laughs> that's cool because when when you would get your driver's license. I, I don't know. I didn't have a CD in my uh, in, in my car when right. I started driving, so I have to take yeah. the CDs and make <laughs> tapes anyway. So it might have been just smart to just stay with tapes. That's true. I remember having like huge boxes of tapes in the car. I remember my no effects tape melted <laughs> sitting in the sun. Um, but I, actually, though, I think the concept of skipping, you know, to song thirteen or something versus rewinding. I right, you know, it's a, it's a no, it's a no brainer on that one. That's true. What was your first CD? Um, I actually, it, it was two. Um, I got, I got on the same day, and Just, nowhere, nowhere near as good as your answer. But <laughs> DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, sweet, and Color Me Bad. Oh yeah, those are great. <laughs> yeah, 
I, that's awesome. That, that, and and that's obviously before it, it was right is right before Nirvana hit is when I yeah. got those CDs. So cool. my my life wasn't changed just yet. I was still in like the Q one oh two, you know, rap <laughs> phase. Q one oh two, yeah. Right. Nice. So fall is upon us, Trevor, and uh, you know, it's my favorite time of year. Um what do you like the most about the fall? Um, you know, I, I've really come to appreciate the fall, like over the years, I, I think I always had a bad association with like going back to school and stuff, you know. Even though I didn't really like dislike school, but right, right. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I love, I love, uh, I love the weather, like the temperature, just like being able to wear a hoodie. I love fire. That's probably my number one thing. <laughs> fire season, oh, it's the best. That is know? pretty awesome. So good. It's my favorite. Yeah, I know what you mean about the back to school. Like every time. September rolls around. I, I still, still yeah. to this day, feel that, it, right? Yeah, that anxiety feeling, like, oh, am I gonna wear something cool on the first day of school? These are things I thought about. You know, oh. like I, I was the type of guy that cared about, you know, what I was seen doing on a Friday night or something. All those stresses, you know, yeah. come back in, in that one feeling. It's so wild. It's just twenty years of like the same feeling, you know, over and over. Right. So. I follow you on Twitter, Triangle Trev. That's Triangle T E R V, and I saw a recent tweet. Uh, you're T R E V. Yeah, that's what I said. No. T E R V. T E R V. Turv. Oh, I'm sorry. Triangle Turv. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> it's cool, man. You I can mean, edit that part out. Okay, that's don't, this is real. Yeah, you know, we don't edit here. The way if I edit something, I gotta burn a DVD and then re-rip it. There's no editing going on here. It's too much work. It is what it is. But um, so the tweet I saw is you were a very nice tweet. You were wishing your wife a happy anniversary. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very nice. We're two married guys right here, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so how did you pop the question? Um, pretty cool. We were in Italy, actually. We were oh, in awesome. Rome visiting my, my friend. And um, uh, it was sort of like the end of the trip. And I had a couple different spots that I was planning on doing it. And... It just didn't feel right, and then the last day, um, we were kind of doing this like pseudo like uh, music video for one of my songs about Italy there. So my buddy was with us, and he was like filming us like around, and I told him about it, and I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna just go over there and you know hang out and whatever, hug or something, <laughs> sit here and film," and uh, and so yeah, we were just in this beautiful park, the Borghese Gardens in Rome, and, um, you know, it was uh, November, and really, really great day, and that's where it all happened, and we got it on video, too, because my buddy was filming, oh, so. that's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. I've been to Rome, actually, that's where we went for our honeymoon, but I didn't film a music video there. That's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. I never made any, I never did anything with the footage, so. Oh, so it doesn't exist online anywhere. It's no. That was my next question. Where can I find that? I um, the song is called Italian Song. The song exists, um, and you know we filmed a bunch of stuff. It was super like low fi cameras, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I never put it together. Uh, I'm I'm still hoping to, even though this was you know three years ago now. Right. Yeah. Again, I'm late. I, you know, I'm I'm pretty late for most trains. You know. <laughs> um, the the food in Italy was just everything you've heard, you know, you hear about it. Good, yeah. I mean, s stuff that would normally tear my stomach up here in the States, I could eat, you know, twice as much in Italy, and I felt terrific afterwards. Me too, man. It's so natural, just like, you know, it's it's great, absolutely. Was Rome uh, the only place you got to, or did you get to go anywhere else? Uh, no, we, we went some other places. That was, um, we had both been there several times before we studied abroad there, and took some other trips there. That trip, um, we were, I think we were just in, no, we went to, uh, I think we went to Florence that trip as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've been to Florence, Venice, um, uh, some other spots around for studying abroad. And, um, and my wife actually has some distant relatives there too in a town called Campobasso. And so we went there um, and visited them, and that was that was really wild. Like they hardly spoke English, and they were just so sweet. Yeah, it was really nice. We yeah. had a huge meal. It was exactly what you're saying. It was like everything you know you 
you would kind of imagine it might be. And it was awesome. And they gave so. you the royal treatment, I'm sure. Oh yeah, they were they were so great, so sweet, you know, and it, it was cool. Venice, um, I, I'm kind of torn on Venice. Like, for a place where the scenery is probably the best scenery you'll ever see in your life. The actual town is kind of like, you know, you're walking around and every place, you know, is like a, some kind of gift shop or something. You there? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, okay. It was breaking up. But yeah, so the, um, what, what are you saying? The scenery's nice, but... I, I said, the scenery in Venice is like amazing you know with the streets the 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 gondolas everything right but the actual town when you're there is just like gift shops all over the place yeah you know? that's true. <laughs> there's really nothing that exciting to do in the actual town yeah so i'm kind of torn on venice like i don't i don't know if i'd recommend it for people to go versus you know florence or rome right but it is the best sites you'll ever see yeah, it's pretty, it, it's beautiful, you know, I mean, it's all the, the canals and being right on, like, it's like an island, they were, you know, um, and I mean, it, yeah, I know what you mean, though, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lot of, like, of those sort of gift shops and, you know. And then, like, shoe stores where, you know, the shoes are a thousand bucks or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I try to avoid any retail store at all costs, usually, so I see those, I just go the other way and find something, you know? <laughs> you know, actually, you were talking about hoodies. I, I, I don't know, I didn't do any research in terms of how to dress in Italy. I'm walking <laughs> around in Rome with, like, a Phillies hoodie. And yeah. Everybody's walking around so, like, dressed so much better than so, I am. I know, man. And I have that same problem all the time. I mean, like, I just, you know, I didn't have the style. And my wife and I had that same experience. We got we got dinner. This was a previous time in Italy in Trastevere. Really amazing, sweet place. You know, kind of had a fancy vibe. We are literally both in hoodies. You know what I mean? Right, right. We walk to this place, and they're just like, and we're like, ah, oh, what can we do? And it was <laughs> like one of the best meals we've ever had, too. Yeah. Was, you know, but yeah, it was like didn't fit in at all right that that kind of stuff usually doesn't bother me but it bothered me there yeah yeah so I really notice it everybody's so good looking and <laughs> the other you know it's like they're probably dirty you know they could be somebody but, but Actually, they look really good did you get the guys that came up to you um i don't know what you call these guys but like they try to give you the roses oh yeah and then you know try to get some money out of you yeah for sure i i just you know after it happened the first time, I, I just said, get out of here, and was a jerk to all the other ones that came up to me. The first time, I don't know why I didn't... Did you buy it? I didn't know. You... What happened was he came up to us, and uh, you know, he compliments my wife and gives her a flower, and he was just real nice. He's like, oh, you're on your honeymoon. Oh, that's great. Oh, here's another rose. <laughs> and we're like, oh, cool. I guess you, people just give you roses here yeah. in town. It's great. And then he just kind of, his look changed. Like, he went from smiling, nice guy to, like, give me some of this. Look it up. And then, you know, the whole vibe changed. And we're like, nah, all we got is credit cards. Sorry, can't do anything for you. And then he just, like, rips the flowers out of my wife's hands. And it happened so <laughs> fast that I, I'm kind of angry when I think about it because I didn't react in a way that I probably wanted to react. Sure. But it just happened so quickly that I'm yeah. the guy. The guy was halfway down the street, and I'm like, "Did, did that really just happen? Like, what just happened?" Right now? <laughs> they're so persistent, you know. And yeah, it's like they're just they're serious about their plan to get you to buy these roses, you know? <laughs> um, and it's it's ridiculous. I mean, so, so come on. what is your least favorite household chore? Uh, least favorite household chore. Well, um, I don't really like doing the dishes all that much, <laughs> but that also seems to be like the one chore that I actually do, so I don't know. There's a lot of chores that I don't do. Now, it doesn't seem like, you know, you're on top of the technology. Have you not upgraded to a dishwasher yet, or? I, I have, but I, you know, and we use the dishwasher, but it's, there's always things that, oh, those can't go in the dishwasher. <laughs> 
you know, I put things in the dishwasher, they come out, and they look like crap. And I'm like, you know, I got you have to pre you have to pre wash or scrub or whatever. Yeah. Dry scrub before you put it in. Right. I stuff. I feel you. I have a really weak dishwasher. Same thing. Like I have I almost have to use soap and scrub everything down because dishwasher won't work. And I'm not going to go out and buy a dishwasher. I mean, that's the last appliance I'm going to replace. <laughs> right. You know. So I'm I'm with you on that. And and then and then you have like the the dish rack next to the sink, and yep. that's an eyesore. I mean, it's either you leave the dishes in the sink or you or you pile them up on the dish rack. It doesn't look good either. Either way, it's you know you're you got a pile of dishes in front of you. <laughs> but that's that's not my least favorite chore. I think because. Uh, I worked in pizza shops and stuff in high school, and I washed dishes, and, you know, I just, ha I, ha I have experience washing dishes, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional dishwasher, so okay. I, I take pride in my dishwashing, I guess, so. Let's see, what's your least favorite? Oh, my God, see, now, I should probably answer these questions myself before I ask, but, um, <laughs> laundry's a, a big one, I hate oh, yeah. laundry, um, I'm okay with cleaning the bathroom, like, I'll clean the toilet, I'll clean the sink, Scrape, you know, the mirror is fine, but the the scrubbing of the shower is is different. oh, that's the worst. I mean, come on, I, it's like why can't you know? There's got to be something to just spray. You uh, know, there spray. there is. And there, you still have to. Do, I mean, uh, you know, a couple months go by. It's gonna. It's bound to happen. Just, people are dirty. That's the bottom line. Well, the, th the thing about the cleaning the shower is like you have to do it in shifts. You can't just go in and knock it out because right. your arm, you know, it, it, I don't care if you <laughs> lift weights every single day. Yeah. The, the amount of elbow grease you got to do to clean your shower is just like you're working muscles in your arms that you never work ever. Right. <laughs> so you got to like dedicate a whole afternoon to cleaning the shower. It's pretty serious. Horrible you know what? I'll take laundry over cleaning the shower any day. Vacuuming is my favorite, I think. <laughs> vacuuming. Vacuuming? So I, I like vacuuming because, you know, I got the the Dyson vacuum as a nice housewarming oh, gift. Nice. There so you that's go. they got that, you know, you can see the, the, the dust go in and swirl around and stuff. So rewarding. It's like, oh look at all that shit I'm picking up. Right, right. I, I don't think I would enjoy vacuuming as much if I had the old school bag, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm kinda there. Although our bat we have like a see through kind of thing, but I'm always like, Can't we get we should get this Dyson ball of vacuum? It seems awesome. They are expensive, but it's if you like vacuuming you know, you're gonna like <laughs> Maybe it I should just invest in one. You yeah. Know? Well, I mean, like I said, I got it as a housewarming present. I don't know if I'd actually. Oh, look at the doggy behind you. Nice. Uh, yeah, you see him. <laughs> What's That's the, do the dog? That's Bernini. I like it. Oh, nice Italian name, right? You see him laying down. Say hi, Bern. Yeah. I I can see his eyes. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right. Well, Trevor. A section we do here on JoeyRitter.com is the book of questions. Okay. okay. Uh, some of these are challenging. Some of them are stupid. Some of them are funny. Some of them are extremely sad. There's 200 of them. I need you to pick a number one uh, or 200. Can't be one. Can't be 200. 44. 44. Good number. So That's like an NHL defenseman number. <laughs> All right. You're offered a million dollars for the following act. Before you are... Ten hold on, hold on. <laughs> Alright, sorry. This is worded weird. All right. It's a good one? I don't know. Should we veto? Should I give you another No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you picked it. We gotta go with it. You're offered a million bucks for the following act. Before you are ten pistols. Only one of them is loaded. You must pick one of the pistols, point at your forehead, and pull the trigger. If you can walk away... You know, without blowing your head off, you're a millionaire. So you got a one out of ten shot of blowing your head off for a million bucks. Wow. Right? See, now that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I think I'd... I mean, it's easy to say <laughs> what I would do, but probably in the circumstance, I would, it might be different. But, yeah, I would do it because <laughs> there's uh, one, yeah, one, in ten, one, one in ten chances that I'm going to die. And if I die... I'm sure whoever, you know, there's the life insurance thing. Either way, somebody's making out. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't want to talk about this, but I bought life insurance this week, and it was the worst experience. 
Um, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry, but just to close the loop on that, I, I would be very sad if I heard that you, that you blew your head off from it. I'm, I'm just saying, if, if, if that news came to me, I would be very upset about that. Well, thanks. But speaking of the life insurance thing, okay, so, you know, I just had a baby five months ago. So you no got, way! Yeah, Congrats! Yeah. Yeah. That's She's awesome. awesome. Thanks. Um, and so you got to get the life insurance, right? You know, if, if something happens to you, you got the kid's got to go to college. Yeah. So... They come to your house, they take blood, um, you know, get a urine sample, the whole bit. I actually got penalized for being honest, okay? I'm not a smoker. Okay. But the way that they asked the question was, like, have you had a cigarette in the last 10 years or something ridiculous? <laughs> and, I, you know, I, maybe like three years ago, I had a cigarette, you know, out at a party right. or something. But, yeah. like, seriously, in the last five years, maybe four cigarettes. And I answered honestly, and and they considered me a smoker based on the what? answer to that question, and my premium went up an extra forty dollars a year. You're kidding me! I'm not kidding you. That's insane. And well, there you go. It's better to lie. Exactly. Know? That's that's <laughs> the moral. It's it's better to be dishonest. And I I was you know, they were testing my blood. They were testing my urine. I I don't know if they could trace cigarettes back to three years ago or something, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> oh, All right, Trevor. Bummer. The, the last maybe, maybe, maybe eventually you can be like, oh, you know, I've quit now. Um, everything's fine. Haven't had a cigarette in a month. They already got my money, and I, you know, I don't, th I don't think they're going to work very hard to change the policy to get less Bastards. money from me. I'm sure if I, I can make a stink about it and 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 get it down, you know, like <laughs> in uh, 2018 or something. But at least you got it. That's that's cool, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Doing all these grown-up things. I know, man. Well, that's that's the whole point of this this blog here, you know, because because you know I'm not I'm not saying having a kid can't play shows anymore, but you know practice and shows and the whole late night lifestyle doesn't quite jive with parenthood, at least not when sure. the baby's born. Yeah. So you know this whole blog thing, catching up with old band friends, you know. I, like I said, I just interviewed Darren from Goldfinger, which was like a huge thrill. So awesome, man. I and mean, it's like. You know, I spent 10 years of my life doing nothing but focused on bands. Like, I would have given anything to talk to him in that time period, but, you know, yeah. I'll take it now. That's so cool, man. I love the blog. It's awesome. I'm, I'm stoked to be on, too. Yeah, def definitely. I mean, it's it's just, you know, it's it, it's fun. Like, some, some pick up a couple more tw Twitter followers each interview and stuff. And, cool. And just, uh, you know, connect with the outside world. So, last uh, last thing I got for you, Trevor... Okay. Is, a, is a section we call Turn It Up or Turn It Off, okay? Very simple. I name a song. You tell me if you turn it up, turn it off. If you'd like to discuss the song, we can totally do that. If I don't agree with your answer, I might argue with you. Okay. Okay, so your first song is Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Turn it up. For sure. Yeah. I, I should know my audience first. I, I, <laughs> the way I pick these is like I kind of put things on shuffle. And you know when it, when, what comes up? Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't ask like offbeat tracks and stuff. I guess I should have put some no effects songs in here, but <laughs> um, all right. So turn it up on Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Second song is "Luck Be a Lady" by Frank Sinatra. Yeah, turn it up. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, I mean, Blue Eyes. Sinatra's just great to have like his background music and so um, awesome. What a voice! Oh yeah. my god. Are you into uh, vinyl at all? Oh, wait, is that vinyl behind you there? I can't tell. Oh, yeah, uh, I got some over here. You can't see it, but yeah, definitely. And I'm not like a vinyl nerd. Like, I don't care about having the best speakers or whatever, but I have yeah. some Frank Sinatra albums. And I'd say, like, Sinatra is the only artist where, you know, the vinyl pops. You know, those imperfections yeah. in the record sound great with his style of music. Absolutely. You it's know? just so warm, and that it's totally analog feel. You can just hear it, and it's amazing. Right. Yeah, we've kind of inherited my uh, my mother-in-law's record collection, and, you know, we've sort of, we buy our own stuff, too, here and there, but, um, yeah, same thing, you know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not a super hi-fi, you know, getting everything on vinyl, walls covered with it or anything. Right, right. But it's it's awesome, I love, I love having it, too. Yeah, sure. All right, your third song is Molly, 16 Candles by Sponge. Molly, sixteen candles. Sixteen candles down the drain. I think. I think. Turn it up. All right. Do, do forget that one now. Do I need to sing it to you? Yeah, sing it for me. Sixteen candles down the drain. Down the drain. 
That's all I got for you. I don't know the verse. Yeah, yeah, that's good. good Sponge. Tunes. I remember that was like '90s stuff, right? Oh uh, yeah, actually, the last three are '90s. Um, all right, so turn it up on uh, Molly. Uh, fourth song is "Come Down" by Bush. Yeah, turn it up. Turn it up. Bush fan, are you? Oh yeah, I mean that song's that song's so good. Mm-hmm. You know, like I I don't know I I wouldn't call myself a Bush fan, but I think that album was pretty awesome. Very that strong song album, in particular. Pretty pretty rocking. That's an underrated album, I think, because I think Bush was so overplayed at the time they were out. Yeah. When you think of a song like Come Down, at the time it was out, you're like, ah, oh, you know, like, that's a song you would turn off, probably, because it, it was just you so... You hear it every day or whatever, yeah. When, when you let time go by, you realize how brilliant of a band Bush was, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, last song is Two Princes by Spin Doctors. Two <laughs> Princes? Oh, man. I don't know. Should I... I guess turn it off. I, I'm a, That song kind of annoys me. Uh-huh. All right, all that right. was one of those songs I'd hear, yeah, like a million times on the radio. I, it doesn't really bother me that much, but, but for yeah. the sake of, you know, having one that I turn off, that's the one. Okay, all right, four out of five, I'll take it. <laughs> now, please spell out your Twitter name again before I botch it. Okay, yeah, the, Triangle Trev. You, you, you had it. So. Okay, all right. Trevor, thanks so much for doing this. It was it was great catching up and continue, Absolutely, continue yeah. success, all right? Thank you, man. You got it. Take care. You too.